One of the issues people sometimes have with Rhapsody is they install it without a compiler and they want to add one later. For example, to move to a method where they build and simulate a system rather than draws pictures of it. I want to show in this video how it's possible to actually add a SIGWIN compiler after installation, including how to download it, select the bits you need, and then what to specify when you install it to make sure that Rhapsody can pick it up in its default location. I'm actually doing this with Rhapsody 901, where she doesn't come with pre-shipped framework libraries, um, so therefore it builds it automatically if they're not pre-built. So I'll show how to build that. And I am also doing it with a 64-bit version. So I'm going to download the 64-bit version of Sigwin with the 64-bit version of Rhapsody. Now, I, I don't actually have the Sigwin compiler installed, so this is going to fail. So build failed. Make is not a recognize or internal or external command. So the next thing I'm going to do is to get hold of a Sigwin compiler. So I can install this afterwards as long as I make sure that I install it into the default directory that Rhapsody expects. So how do we get hold of Sigwin? So firstly, I'm going to Google to get hold of Sigwin download. And in order to install it, I get hold of this executable. And that enables me to choose which parts of the Sigwin distribution I want to install. And it's, a, it's huge. I don't want to install it all. I'm actually installing the 64-bit version here. And I'm going to show you basically downloading without installing first. So it's going to put it in a particular folder. Then I need to choose which mirror I want. And then we get to the complicated choice part of this. So I'm actually going to change from pen into category. And I'm going to look for some of the development tools. And there's three aspects I need to be careful to choose here. The first is essentially the GCC compiler. So let's look for GCC, G++, and I want to install the latest of that. Secondly, I want the debugger, the GDB debugger. So install the latest non-test of that. And then thirdly, I want the GNU make. And I'll pick the latest of that. The, the version here shouldn't matter. But obviously I'm downloading it into a particular folder so that whenever I want to install it again, I don't actually have to download it again, so I'd have the same version if I wanted to install across multiple machines. So it's going to auto-determine some dependencies, and then I'll start downloading. This can take a while. OK, so that's download completed, so I'll click, click Finish there. And as you, as you know, I downloaded without installing. And that was just to show you kind of the, the two-step process, if you like. So the, the third step is to run the installer again. And this time I'm going to install from local directory. Um, I'm going to choose a root. So if this says 64, then it's important you change it. So let's just kind of understand why that is. So Rhapsody will install um, part of its installation to program files, IBM, Rhapsody, um, and effectively there's a there's an install area here, and in in this area is where it will compile something called the framework libraries, which an executable in Rhapsody would would essentially link to. So. To invoke a compiler, Rhapsody actually does it through command line. And you can see here in program files, IBM, Rhapsody, 
share, etc. That um, it's going to be looking for C Sigwin bin by default. So if I if I install it into that folder, then the default settings that Rhapsody has will effectively come into play. So that's my C Sigwin. I'll click next. This was the folder that it picked for the download. And again, I'm on the category view here. Look for the development area and make sure that I install the GCC compiler, the, the debugger and the GNU make the, the rest are inferred or dependents, so it should calculate that automatically and then it will do the installation. After it's completed the installation, I, before I actually do anything in Rhapsody, I, I'm just going to check that that worked okay. So I'll launch a command prompt and I'm going to change directory. This is the Sigwin. Go to the bin folder. Let's make sure that if I run GCC that it actually finds an executable so that, that fatal error is actually exactly what I want and the, the make is there. Oh, just type that make. There we go. So the make is there which is good. And Now if I went back to Rhapsody I can actually invoke smart build. Um, but if I do this with 901 then uh, it will determine that the folder that contains the framework isn't there and it will try and build it. Um, I can do that manually by choosing create execution environment here. So you can see how essentially when I do this it's going to use the compiler to set up the environment with the Sigwin's 64-bit compiler and it's going to use the user share folder and you can see if I go back to the user share folder that I've got this language CCP folder and it's essentially building the object execution framework in this folder now. So this, this does, does actually take a while, um, at least five or ten minutes. So I'll, we'll just wait for this to complete. Obviously it only needs to be done once for a particular compiler or compiler settings. Okay, so you can see here it's completed. So essentially that's built a number of libraries using the default configuration compiler settings, which were set to that SIGWIN. You see these are 64-bit libraries. At this point, I can now choose to do a smart build. And you can see here it's compiling with that CPP, sorry, the CPU set to 64-bit and I have a essentially an executing application. So I could generate the toggle. So just a few things to finish off is if I have, this is 64-bit Sigwin with a 64-bit Rhapsody. It's kind of what it's expecting. Um, if I have a Thirty-two bit Sigwin, then I would need to change the CPU to be to be x86. But that's it, really.